Okay, Google. What went wrong? Sorry, I don't understand. I mean, what happened? If you'd like to know what's happening in the world, you can ask me to show you the news. But if you're worried about what's going on with you, the best thing to do is talk about it with a close friend. <laughs> you don't even understand me anymore. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get better at this kind of thing. <laughs> you're not the woman I fell in love with. Here are some results from the web. What went wrong with Google? What went wrong? Seems like it was just yesterday I had the Motorola X. The Moto X. Oh, you know what? Drop a comment, drop an X in there if you were with the Motorola X. If you know about the Motorola X. That was Google at one of its best software innovation. Oh man, I had never been so excited for a phone because up until then it was just a hardware race. Hardware race after hardware race. Who can shove the most megapixels into a camera? Screens expanding. But here was a device that came and said, what's the best we can do with the Google ecosystem and with the Google software? How can we improve the experience of the user? And the end product of that was one of the best devices to this date that has ever come out of the Google ecosystem. And that was the Moto X. Now I had the Moto X. I rarely, I, I pretty much don't order a phone ahead of time. When they announced this phone, I went ahead and I pre-ordered it. I had never been so excited for a phone. Now with the Moto X, this was the first device that had always on Google Voice uh, recognition. So you could just say the keyword and sure enough, your phone would answer. Now this was awesome because it gave you a whole new control over your device. It felt futuristic. It felt like this was where technology needed to be. You just speak to your phone, it speaks back to you, it understands. Now it was not perfect, but at this time, no other device had that. Now you had Siri coming up but it was nowhere close to what Apple, uh, it was nowhere close to what Google Assistant was. It wasn't called Google Assistant then, but Google System was so much better. And the phone itself, it focused on making the user experience so much better. It was a smooth device. You had all the gestures that were actually intuitive and actually were helpful. And over the years, things got better. Uh, we had devices that were evolving. Samsung joined the party. They slowly made their software better. Everyone started making their software better. It wasn't as clunky. It wasn't as prone to lagging in anymore. Because that used to be the joke. You know, ha ha, your, your Android's lagging. It's not as smooth. Now, that was not necessarily the case anymore. Devices became a little bit smoother. Also, the camera started improving, and then came along the Pixel device. That was that was the champ right there. That's what we were waiting for. Now, we had the Nexus brand in the past, and it was priced reasonably. It was meant for the people. You know, this was pure Google experience, but hardware-wise, it was always lacking in terms of the camera department and some other specs uh, area. It was never the best. Now the Pixel was meant to be this device that bridged that and put it all together in a nice package coming out of Google. And for the most part, they achieved that. There was a lot of issues with that first device, but for the most part, it gave us a great camera system. This was something that was not seen in most Android devices. Apple was still kind of the reigning champ of camera, cameras at this point in time. But the Pixel came, overtook the uh, iPhone, and now Android were able to celebrate. Yes, we have a device that's capable in the terms of photography department. So moving forward, things have gone up. They got better. But more recently, within the past two years, it seems like they've gone down. 
in the moment where Android was progressively getting better and creating its own identity, somewhere along the line, they lost track of all of that and they went back to trying to copy Apple. Um, yeah. Headphone jack removal. Okay. Like, what purpose does that serve? I'm not quite sure. The joke always used to be Android users have had, you know, all these features for years, waterproofing, wireless charging, all this stuff. We've had this for years. That's great because Android was that innovative. It was doing all of these, uh, taking all these meaningful steps and progress in the device. But for some reason, they started following the trend. Design. Now the notch became the premium look and now we have devices that now have these ugly notches for instance the Google Pixel 3 <sighs> it's so confusing it's like where's the direction not only that but things just got worse the price the price just progressively increased and increased now this is fine, but if you're going to increase the price, don't give us compromises. A lot of these devices, they still have compromise. That was not warranting that price tag. Devices are still not getting the update cycle that we deserve, you know? Apple on the other side, they support their devices quite well. And more and more, you're seeing concepts from Apple being borrowed by Android users. And the result, I feel like, is a loss of identity for the Android ecosystem. And surprisingly, now it has someone like me looking over at the Apple ecosystem like, you know what? If Android is just going to copy all of what Apple is doing, why not just go for the real deal? Because at this point, Apple has everything that Android has and then some more, and it does things better. You have better support, accessories, all of that stuff, because Apple is so, the iPhones are so popular, there's so much support around that. Versus you don't really get that on the Android side. The camera system, it was better on Android for a while, and now night sight, night, not night sight, night mode has you know come across to the Apple side so low life photography is not better on the Apple side. It's equivalent between, and it's more of a preference, but pretty much its capabilities are similar between the tie-in Android flagships. You also have waterproofing. Apple does waterproofing better. They took what was already there in the Android uh, manufacturers and they made it better. The camera system, as I mentioned, the video system is still much better than we have on the Android side. The software, it's getting better and better. It's not, you're not able to customize it as much as Android. And there's still a few issues, but these are minor issues that I think you can get over. Point is, I don't know what happened. It seems like every new device that comes out, there is no clear direction for the Android ecosystem. and. As an Android fan and someone who uses Android phones, it kind of sucks because I do want a good experience with my device. I love getting the new devices, but more and more, these new devices are taking out components that people love, putting more components that people don't really care about. Samsung, what we need a space zoom for. Like It's the most useless, gimmicky, feature and the prices just keeps on getting higher and higher and these devices are getting ridiculously big and the options are just it's not as diversified anymore but we have the pixel 4a coming out we have the pixel 5 of course but to be honest i think the pixel 5 is going to be it's going to be a flop i don't think it will do better than the pixel 4 Unless if they fix the battery issues, of course. Um, I think that's a big down, downfall of the Pixel 4. Uh, one of the reasons that 
you know, we can get you can get away without the wide angle lens. It sucks, but you can get away with that. But when the device is so poor in battery life, that's pretty bad there. I think the 4A is the device to look out for. And I think a new segment of high quality mid-range devices. I don't know. I think that might be the new the new direction for Android. I think that might be where the battle is where you can make the most optimal device with the lowest price. Now we're seeing Apple doing this. If you've seen the leaks, they have the entire price range spectrum covered. Now there's an option. Before it was either you were paying a thousand dollars for the iPhone or you were paying something lower and you're getting the Android. Now for the people who don't want to spend a thousand dollars they want to be spending around 500 now they have an apple device that they can potentially use and that's not good news for android that's not good news i think there's going to be a lot of conversion i'm actually considering getting the uh iphones the iphone se that's that's a pretty special device but i'm actually more interested in the 5.4 iphone 12. that device looks crazy Imagine that form factor, right? 5.4 inch. <laughs> and the price point. <sighs> yeah, it's going to be crazy. I find myself more excited for Apple devices these days than Android. But I think that's just where we're at right now. But yeah. All right. I'm done.